Hello and welcome to another tutorial. We're going to continue our discussion on external tools uh, for running uh, the native image with a uh, uh, Maven project inside Eclipse IDE. And we saw how to set up a Maven project in Eclipse IDE, how to set the run configuration, how to set the compiler version, uh, properties for source and target to let's say JDK 17. And then uh, we saw how to run uh, Maven uh, builds. Uh, we said that by default, Eclipse uses its internal compiler to compile these, and it knows that it has to put the class files inside this target directory. That's how Maven applications work, right? And but then uh, let's. Uh, um, the thing here is that uh, we said that the the reason people use Maven is twofold. One is if I share this project, this source file, this whole project with some other person, maybe they use different IDs, right? And we said that if the project build of that project is managed by the ID, then uh, importing this Eclipse project into another ID like uh, IntelliJ is probably not that easy. But with Maven, people don't care, right? So. First of all, most of the IDs have support for Maven. The other thing is that uh, you don't really need to rely on IDE to build this Maven project and create the artifact. Let's say eventually this project will be a jar file, will be compiled and packaged as a jar file and other people can uh, use it as a dependency, right? So Maven only understands POM. So I can actually, um, let's say, uh, uh, I can actually open the root here, uh, actually in a terminal, let's open it in a terminal. As I mentioned, uh, after I installed Maven, it's added to the path environment variable. So MVN, which is the Maven command is available. And I have this POM directory. Maven tool only understands POM, right? So if I say MVN clean, it looks at the POM, understands that this directory has a POM. So it's a Maven project. And it tells me that I'm cleaning everything. And it was successful. If now we look at this... Uh, target directory it's fully empty right the classes is fully empty right so the maven clean actually doesn't clean up the target it cleans up the classes because these classes is where all the class files are this is the root of our class path for the java project now obviously now if i try to run this in eclipse it's going to give us an error because i removed all the class files so the main class this demo class is no longer available the compiled version of it but then I can go ahead and uh, if somebody gives me this Maven project, I can go inside this uh, re root directory that has the POM file and I tell my MVN to just compile this application. And again, Maven looks at the POM, understands all the configurations. Remember, all the configurations are in the POM. For example, the compiler target, etc. And it tells me that I'm compiling two source files and putting them in the target classes. So if we say ls... Um, target and then classes now we have this java native image and inside that it's going to be uh, our um, inside that it's going to be our uh, two classes that are on the class path demo class test class right and now if i go back to eclipse and try to run it it's going to work because uh, i used maven build tool to compile with jdk 17 and then uh, Eclipse knows that uh, in order to run a uh, Java application, which is part of the Maven, it has to search inside the target classes, right? Target directory and inside that there is a classes, etc. So Eclipse, e e Eclipse is very well aware. And that's the beauty of having a Maven project inside Eclipse. Now, if you are more familiar with Maven, you know that you can't, you don't even need to create a Maven project inside an ID. You can just create a directory uh, use Maven, uh, basically use the Maven, MVN, and then archetype, for example, and then uh, uh, give it, and it creates a directory, creates this hierarchy, SRC main Java, SRC main resources, etc. So the beauty of Maven projects is that the build system is independent, really, of the IDE. And almost all IDEs have support for Maven projects. You can just import them into the IDE, and IDEs recognize what's going on. Now, another important benefit, which is the, the, the most important benefit uh, or the strength of using Maven in uh, an ID, basically, or uh, instead of using a built-in uh, project, Eclipse build, we use Maven build, is dependency management. Dependency management. What does it mean? Now, obviously, uh, when you're developing a code, you don't want to write everything from the scratch, right? So let's say... Um, I want I have two integers 250 and 75 I want to find to find the greatest uh, 
common divisor. What is the maximum, what is the greatest integer, the largest integer that these two numbers can be divided by? And there, there are algorithms for finding this. And uh, you probably can, this is a very simple case, so you can probably get, uh, uh, guess that the answer GCD, the greatest common divisor is going to be 25. Because 25 times 3 is 75. 25 times 10 is um, uh, 250, right? And so here I guess that, but I want to have a, I want to use, a, I want to have a code or a library to you write it. So obviously I don't want to spend my time to write a code from scratch to implement the algorithm because this obviously this is a very fundamental concept and somebody has to have, ha, somebody has already written a function for this. There, there is, it's definite, right? So I just want to uh, find a library, to find a library to do this. And I happen to know that Google Guava has a uh, uh, int math class that uh, has a function GCD. So this kind of comes down to you can either Google it uh, to find a function in Java that calculates this or implements this algorithm. I happen to know that Google Guava already has a class that do this. So what I want to do, I want to add this Google Guava as a dependency to my Maven project. So let's open up a uh, internet browser and search for Google uh, Guava or maybe we can go just to Maven Central which is the main uh, online repository that Maven uses um, for searching for dependencies right so it's a very huge dependency and let's say search for Google uh, Guava and so Google Guava is the Google core libraries for Java Every, basically every Java developer has already heard about Google Guava. It's a very important library and we want to use the latest version. And another benefit of Maven is versioning. So sometimes an upgrade uh, when a library goes from one version to another, some uh, backwards compatibility is broken. So you can actually tell Maven uh, which version of this library to use. I want to use the latest version and I want to use Maven, right? So you uh, you can, if your build system is Gradle, uh, Ivy, and other things that you can select, I want to build with Maven. So I want to choose this Maven. So how do we add dependencies? You open up the POM file. Remember, Maven only understands POM and Eclipse ID happens to also interpret the POM. Eclipse provides this nice graphical view. You can go to the purely text version of the poem, which is an XML file. And what the way this works is you create a dependencies uh, tag. So I'm going to hit uh, autocomplete, control a space, and create a dependencies tag, right? And then uh, I'm going to copy and paste this dependency code that we just uh, basically uh, copied from the Maven Central. And let's say Command Shift F to do auto format. So now our application has one dependency as as soon as I hit save, you see it, Maven goes and searches in your local uh, Maven repository m2 inside your home directory. If the jar file, this guava 31.1 was not available, Maven goes to Maven central and downloads this jar file. And after that, Eclipse, uh, Eclipse uh, understands that and then it adds it to your um, basically uh, uh, class path. Now, what's interesting is that not only this Guava was added, a lot of other jars were also added, these three and these three. That's because this Guava also has dependencies. So this is the main strength of Maven or Maven projects is that if the dependency also has dependencies of its own, Maven understands it and it's able to handle everything, right? And again, this project uh, in Eclipse, Eclipse understands that this project has a Maven nature. So it understands that not only it has to create, it shows this nice Maven dependencies uh, view. And it shows you Google Guava is now on the class path, but also all the dependencies of this Guava are also on the class path because I mean, you cannot have this dependency and not have its own dependencies on the class path, right? Everything has to be on the class path. So now that this is inside the Google Guava, uh, come Google comment, and then there is a ma uh, math package. And inside that, there is this int math. And inside this int math, there is a GCD, greater common divisor. So 
uh, basically uh, it says returns the greatest common divisor of a and b so that's exactly the functionality that i want and it's a static method so it's very easy to use so all i have to say i have to say um uh, var um let's say y equals int math it's the name of the class from com google common math int math and eclipse automatically adds the import and then gcd uh, 250 and 75 and sys out um, uh, gcd of uh, 20, 250 and 70 is um, plus uh, y let's make sure that uh, this works let's run it as soon as i save this eclipse compiles this and puts it in the target classes so i don't need to really run maven build uh, when this maven project is, is inside eclipse id so if i run this it tells me that uh, the gcd of 250 and 70 is 25 as i expected now what i want to do i want to um uh what i want to do i want to actually uh, ask the user to input two numbers so i can either do this or use a, uh, a scanner so instead of doing this i'm going to say that sys out enter uh, two integer numbers with a space and i'm going i'm not going to add a uh, print uh, and then uh, i'm going to create a scanner a scanner a new a scanner and i'm going to hook it up to the, the uh, to the system dot in right the input stream is system dot in and then i'm going to say that uh, um, a is a, a, or int a or num1 is uh, a scanner dot uh, next int and then uh, int uh, num2 is a scanner dot next int and then what we want to do we want to say int y is uh, int math dot gcd of num1 and num2 and then we're going to print um, so person d person d uh, person D so I usually prefer instead of just breaking this string and using the plus operator I'm going to, I use the formatted a string so num1 num2 and y it's much easier so let's test this in Java uh, enter two integers 250 75 and then the GCD of 250 at 75 is 25 100 uh, and uh, 72 and then the GCD of 172 is 4 all right so everything uh, looks fine and uh, we have to it says that uh, this uh, scanner is a resource there is a resource leak so we kind of need to close it uh, usually this is this doesn't is not required if you don't so if the uh, scanner is hooked up to the system in because the system in is never closed as long as your Java application is running right so if your uh, scanner is hooked up to the system in the input a uh, standard input is streamed to JVM you don't really need to close it because this is going to be open unless there is a particular reason that you need to close the scanner all right the reason that Eclipse marks it as auto uh, re resource uh, leak is because the scanner implements the general uh, interface of closable and that's why um, the closable extends auto closable so any auto closable is uh, basically uh, eclipse can flag it as resource leak that's the only reason right so right now there is nothing special about this but now when it comes to actually compile this application this java application to native executable binary right that's the power of java and the graal vm you can quickly develop an application which has huge amount of dependencies we just added google guava it also has huge number of other dependencies and maven has no problem and now i want to uh, compile this uh, class which is a demo class this is my java application it has a main method it's the entry point to my java application i want to compile it to native executable binary right now this native directory is empty and we already set up an external tool what i want you to appreciate right now with this last setup that we did is that we are asking eclipse to provide the project class path for the native image we're not explicitly adding providing the class path eclipse we're just providing this uh, placeholder which has in which is an internal environment variable for eclipse now note what happens when i look at the command wow hyphen cp all the way to here 
these are all the dependencies that now we have on our class path in order for us to successfully run our Java application. And again, uh, Eclipse is replacing that uh, environment variable, project class path, with automatically with all these. So native image hyphen CP Eclipse provides our class. Now there is really no way for us to manually figure out what directories to add to the class path uh, to run this native image. That's almost impossible. There's so many. If you add a jar from your uh, from Maven and that jar already has lots of other dependencies, it's it's almost impossible, right? But that's the beauty of this external tool in the Eclipse IDE because Eclipse always tracks down what's going on. Eclipse is aware of the class path. That's why you can run this Java application, which is a Maven application in your um, in your uh, in your uh, Eclipse ID, right? Eclipse understands what's going on under class path, etc. So all we have to do, we don't really need to change anything. Even if we have a huge number of dependencies, doesn't matter. As long as you provide this hyphen CP as, uh, uh, ask, as long as you ask Eclipse to provide the class path for the native image, we are going to be golden, right? So I want to really understand the power of this. Uh, so here, we created a quickly use an external library, Google Guava. Uh, and then we're using that external library um, and then we're calculating this uh, GCD. And now we're compiling this entire application to a native executable binary. So a uh, native image is running, Eclipse provides all the dependencies, all the class path stuff. Uh, right now, so far, there is no problem inlining methods and hopefully after after this the compilation finishes and we get, we get a native executable binary done uh, everything was successful uh, there was no error so in the native image we have this so let's uh, open up a um, terminal here so we can use the internal terminal of Eclipse So dot Java native image demo class enter two numbers two fifty seventy five GCD of two fifty and seventy five is twenty five. Again, we use an external library and we use Maven because Maven is amazing for dependency management, and then uh, um, uh, Eclipse ID is amazing for keeping tr or basically tracking the project class path because with Maven if you add a jar for suddenly there might be lots of other jars that added to the class path because of the dependencies that this jar file this Guava has and it's really impossible for us to manually track those dependencies but then once the Eclipse ID tracks those it enables us to uh, uh, write a Java application very quickly like in two minutes I wrote this and then uh, now uh, native image compile it to a native executable binary so <clears throat> I can quickly say demo class run it uh, enter two integer numbers 100 uh, 101 obviously the GCD is one we can rerun it again enter two integer numbers uh, 21 and uh, uh, 63 obviously it's 21 etc so I hope you really understand this that Java and Maven has this huge uh, library uh, Maven central and then uh, um, you can use Maven inside Eclipse ID to manage your dependencies Eclipse ID always tracks your class path and uh, once you set the external tool to <clears throat> uh, to use the class path from Eclipse ID you are golden you, you can uh, quickly write a very complicated application, Java application with lots of dependencies, and then you compile it to a native executable binary. I hope you really enjoyed this lecture. Please stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.